Hello and welcome to Pearl Magazine. The COVID-19 virus made its way across the planet in 2020, crippling economies and throwing millions out of work. For musicians in Hong Kong, it was the year the music stopped. While every industry was affected, those making a living in music were suddenly out of work as venues shut down and live gigs were banned. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I was so happy back then. I was enjoying it. Yeah, it's like every night, it's like, yeah, this is what I want. <laughs> Live music was banned as the pandemic wound its way through Hong Kong. Oh, man, it was depressing because um, there's no job, you know. Uh, it feels unreal, you know, like for uh, for how many weeks and months, you know, when the lockdown started. And then we have no gigs. We can't do, you know, we have no job. I have no job. It was hard, especially for uh, paying rent, providing for a uh, family, you know. He did some part-time work for a few weekends, working for an office building, checking people's temperatures in a lobby. It didn't last long. I sent some uh, CVs from uh, a anywhere, uh, online, and nobody actually called. I don't know, um, yeah, it was hard. Honestly, I had some breakdowns, you know, back then, uh, last year. Yeah, being like jobless, it feels like a bomb, useless, you know. <laughs> How did you survive? One thing, I sold my instruments. I had five uh, bass guitars, so uh, four, four of them, I, I sold it for, for my, you know, Rent and you know basic necessities and all. It's what it was tough, you know. It was it is tough until up to now, you know. Actually, the breaking point was when he was evicted at the end of the year. I had a hard time to uh, pay rent. I borrowed money from friends just to get by, you know, for that month and month and month and month until finally I got kicked out on December. Yeah, it was. Ah, man. I almost got homeless, <laughs> actually. Oh yeah. Desperate, he borrowed more money to pay for a cheaper place. And he forked out money to buy a bike and pay the registration to work for a food delivery company. Sometimes I do eight hours, sometimes I do 10 hours, sometimes I do six hours. It, it depends on, on, on the av availability of uh, uh, the uh, shift. But it's not cheap delivering food. He's gone through three bikes. His first bike broke down beyond repair after a few weeks. A friend who was leaving Hong Kong gave him his bike, but it was stolen four days ago. It's a very, very good bike. It's an old model, but very good. But it got stolen for after like a month after, I guess, yeah, at my home, outside the hallway. <laughs> After buying a third cheap bike that didn't make it through the month, he finally invested in a good bike. How much did you spend? Um, like three grand. It's still uh, entry level, but it's so okay. <laughs> it's so okay right now. Yeah. And it's and it's light. <laughs> it's lighter. <laughs> I got a lock right now, yeah. He works the graveyard shift. Usually, um, I start at 10 in the evening until like uh, 6 or 7 the, fall, the following morning. The graveyard uh, past midnight. It's better, actually, for me. People are hungry at midnight, you know? <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of uh, orders. He says that what he makes in a day now, he used to make in an hour or two as a musician. 
The last year, he says he felt so down that not only did he stop playing music for pleasure, he stopped listening to it. Uninspired, you know, it's like, I don't want to hear music. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's like, I, I feel sad when, when I hear music. It hurts, you know. But a few weeks ago, he finally felt good enough to pick up his guitar. Good. Okay. My finger hurts. Fingers hurt. <laughs> I gotta practice. I need to practice. Ah, uh, man. I need yeah. weeks, I guess. <laughs> you know, to, uh, you know, strengthen my fingers again and, you know, grow some calluses again. And there's... <laughs> Look at this. It's, it's, uh, my callus is here. It's usually here. So it's transferred here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bike, yeah. It feels like the first time, but it, it was so beautiful. I mean, I was so happy at that time, you know. It's like I don't wanna, I don't wanna stop. I don't wanna, I don't wanna end that that um, moment. But <laughs> honestly, I I, I I had a hard time <laughs> because I, my my fingers are out of shape. I haven't been playing bass for how how many months? Like four or five months already. Charles is hopeful the music will come back, and has decided to play regularly with his friends during his free time. Are you hopeful that maybe the gigs might come back this year in 2021? Yeah, of course. I'm still hopeful, but, but not really expecting that much. The vaccination, um, I think it will be our uh, pass to, uh, you know, uh, bring back our normal life. Last March 2020, the first bar and band cluster happened here, affecting 103 people. Since then, there have been larger clusters but musicians are the only group who've not been able to go back to work for over a year now. Yes, the stigma is uh, actually uh, a very bad image, a very bad reputation to musicians because everyone thought that they are the one who spread all these things. But the truth is musicians were the victims. You know, I actually, we, you know, we explained that to, to the go Hong Kong government, you know. It's, it's not the musicians that are the carrier of this disease. They were victims. Manuela Lo is the chairwoman of the Hong Kong Musicians Union, which represents only a small portion of musicians in Hong Kong. She's spoken to government officials, along with other industry representatives, about how to get musicians back to work. We help and propose all these precautions that musicians should do just to, you know, just to let them go back to work. You know, wearing masks on stage, partitions, not talking to, not mingling around before and after the show. We, we did all these uh, proposals to the government. Then they allow us to work again. I think it only lasted less than a month and we had the fourth outbreak. I feel so helpless. We feel so helpless because there's no other way we can discuss it with them again because, as we all know, everything is still closed. Chris B. works as a live music organizer with her company, The Underground, and is a musician herself. She ran a survey last year to assess how she might be able to help those in need. A friend of mine told me there was a musician who was becoming homeless and he had a family, he had three kids, and I'm like, how is this possible? I was like, how many of them are there? The survey showed that more than 70% of musicians were using their savings to support themselves, and less than half were able to find work outside of music. She estimates that there are about 2,000 full-time musicians in Hong Kong. We're talking about hundreds of musicians who are um, borrowing money, living off their savings, many of them getting a different job, you know, that doesn't pay as well. And, and then to find out there was something like 6% are either homeless or being evicted, it was, it was actually a shock. She said those lucky enough to find jobs got them in food deliveries if they were fit enough, or as dishwashers, which doesn't require previous experience. 
Like Manuela, she met with lawmakers to make a case for the musicians, but discovered that as a group, they didn't have any representation in LegCo. Every couple of weeks we look to see what the government's saying, and they don't even mention live music. They don't even mention it. It's not, it's not even a thought. Up next, how the music community is banding together to help those most in need and how they're trying to get back into venues. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pearl Magazine. With most full-time musicians out of work for over a year, just surviving has been a struggle as they compete with the masses of unemployed trying to get any work they can. The more fortunate in the community are doing what they can to help those most in need. One woman has launched a musician's charity, which she hopes will get funds to those struggling the most. Because musicians don't have one representative, like the catering business, there's small union, there's a small association, a small alliance, it's too fragmented. And the government repeatedly said, officials repeatedly said to me over and over, if we give money to them, how do we give it to them? If we, we can't give it to one association because it doesn't cover all of them. So Chris decided to found the Musicians Foundation, which just got off the ground after months of setting up. What they do is, like they get money either from the government, from individuals, from corporations, and then the musicians that are in need, like be it from COVID or if they, you know, had some critical illness that stops them from performing, they get a grant um, and that and they actually pay their rent, their electricity bill, et cetera, et cetera. They don't put money in their pockets, which I think is a good model. For musicians who can't find work, the only options are to borrow money or apply for social security, which doesn't give them very much and means as soon as they get work, they lose the support. Tommy Chung, the legislative counselor representing the catering industry, has taken up their cause. Like Chris, he acknowledges that many of them have had to borrow money and may be digging themselves into a hole they can't escape. Some of them um, they couldn't be borrowing from their friends because all their friends are in the hole. So loan sharks is probably where you go and uh, it will take a long time to uh, pay back. And I think uh, government should be helping them. The uh, self-employed, unfortunately, in this situation, is the worst uh, group uh, because they have no employees to look after them. Uh, the ESS scheme doesn't help them. They probably, unfortunately, do not do any um, MPF. Together with Chris and Manuela, he met with government officials to press their case. When they call, having not knowing who they could get the help from, I talk to them. I get government officials to meet with them. Um, when I talk to the uh, chief secretary who is responsible for giving out compensations and all that. Uh, I did not be on their behalf. Both Manuela and Chris met with Tommy and government officials to let them know musicians would self-regulate with masks, partitions, not mixing with patrons, and COVID testing. So they're willing to do all that. And the government agrees that should be good enough. But they still shut them down. I think uh, they don't pay enough uh, uh, attention to all these um, workers, businesses, groups who have taken to do extra work to prevent spreading, you know, if they get infected. In the meantime, various fundraisers for musicians are ongoing. The Musicians Union have invited these bands to film in their office today. Hong Kong Musicians Union uh, decided to do this fundraising uh, where, you know, most bands are um, plays, uh, uh, you know, play, play songs and for, for YouTube, for people to uh, watch and hopefully donate. 
and so we can uh, help the, the musicians that are jobless now. Musicians performing today all have day jobs and want to do what they can to support their friends. I'm fortunate enough that I have a full-time job outside of mu music, but I have a lot of friends that are musicians that are struggling at the moment. So, yeah, it's been very tough on them. Right. Today, Casey feels lucky he took a day job before the pandemic. Being in the band is not forever. I, you know, I, my contract was terminated and I had to struggle to find some ways to make ends meet to support my family and support myself as well in Hong Kong. I decided that 2015, uh, I had to find a full daytime job. I struggled because uh, my hands are for playing guitars and you know, carrying trays with champagne glasses, wine, wine glasses are too hard, too hard for me. I even broke glasses. I'm now currently working at Chick Shack at IFC. It feels good. With their first round of online concerts, they raised $50,000. Today, they're distributing $500 each to the union members. Tomorrow, they'll distribute whatever is left to non-members. <laughs> Voltaire Kosho, a Filipino musician in his 60s, was already struggling from bad health when the pandemic hit. Since then, he's lost his job and had to move into a subdivided flat with his wife and daughter. We're just like uh, sardines here <laughs> when, we, when we sleep. So uh, this is uh, a sofa, sofa bed, uh, have to extend, and then we have another bed there. This year, he began playing music on an online platform for three hours a day. Viewers who enjoy his music buy hearts and give them to him. Honesty is such a lonely word. Everyone is so unsure. Every heart means money. One heart is around, it's around one dollar, something like that. So we have to gather those hearts. Mostly what I need from you. Soundtrack, hello. Hello. He says his biggest fans are his relatives in Australia. What he makes a week ranges from 100 US dollars to 800, his biggest payday so far. His wife and daughter both work. My wife and her uh, split the rent cost and some uh, the broadband and everything, you know, the telephone and everything, yeah. They split all the costs. I'm a friend who lives out there and I drive by. With venues shut and no live gigs, businesses like this music studio are suffering as well. It's used by bands to rehearse and record. I mean, I would say it's, it's one of the most I've struggled in, in a few years. In this last year, I think 70% of, of my work that I normally would have had had either been canceled or just I didn't get. And, uh, you know, that's, that's tough because when you're in a business that's based on projects, you, everyone is kind of like gets you to the next one. And when all of a sudden you've lost it all, it's, it, you kind of have to either look for work elsewhere or just hope something comes by. Like many others, the uncertainty of the situation is taking a mental toll on John. I think I can run it out for the year, maybe, just mentally. I want to say that I'm, I've reached my limit, but then I reached my limit so many times that I'm now just kind of desensitized to it. And I'm looking at, like, the summer as kind of my mental, like, hopefully by then things have picked up. But if not, like, there's not much we can do about it. That's just the time that we live in, and it's just the phase that we're going through. And if we can get through it... Yeah. 
everyone stays cautiously optimistic, Chris points out the musicians seem to be the group struggling the most in this pandemic. The musicians are the last to recover. They were the first to suffer and then the last to recover. You can see what they're doing with the catering establishments, right? Of course they're going to make musicians like either get vaccinated or, or constantly testing. And it seems musicians are ready to do whatever it takes to get back to work. You got your vaccine? I, I got it. I got, I got my first jab. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And what about all your friends? Have they done the same thing? Yeah. All musicians, um, yeah, basically all musicians, hoping uh, these uh, vaccination will uh, get us back you know, yeah. to, to work. You know? yeah. yeah. So I guess you guys are willing to do anything to get back to work. Yeah. Or, yeah. Whatever it takes, yeah. It's our lives, you know? Yeah, for how many years and then just suddenly just gone. Feels surreal, but, you know? On the wind, you know, cause I got no way to go. That's why I want you to know. And I'm Whether these measures taken by the industry will be enough to convince the government to let live music back in venues is yet to be seen. For now, they're struggling to survive to see that day. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. Yeah. That's Pearl Magazine this week. Next week, as we celebrate Mother's Day in Hong Kong, we take a look at the predicament domestic helpers find themselves in when they're pregnant here. What do they do if they're out of work and are their rights protected? See you then. Good night.